Hi, this is Unmesh. How are you today? I hope you are making your day an awesome one. So today we're going to be talking about high-end black and white conversions in Photoshop. And this is one of the methods which you would use if you have ton of time in hand. At the same time, you want extremely high quality results. You see, black and white conversion is an art in itself. And the art lies in determining how each color would render in black and white. Make sense? No? Let me make it sense for you. Suppose you have an image. A landscape with a sky full of clouds and it's totally blue and you convert that into black and white. How will the blue color sky look like? Will the blue look light gray? Will it look dark gray? Will it look white? Will it look black? Now making these decisions is what becomes an essential part of black and white conversion. Now these decisions can be easily made in Photoshop, Lightroom or Camera Raw. For example, right now in Photoshop, you can go ahead and add a black and white adjustment layer. And let's just stick it into the left and let's make it a little narrower so that you can see. Now, if I decrease the reds, you can see every area that was red before we converted this image to black and white becomes darker. If we take it to the right, the red areas become brighter. Okay, if I turn this off, have a look. These areas were red, her lips, her dress. If we decrease it, the red areas become darker. Same with the yellows, blues. For every color, you have one slider which controls the luminosity or the brightness of that color. But here's the thing. Her lip, have a look at her lips. Her lips are pink-ish or light red. What if you want to affect just her lips? Not possible, right? Because there's one red slider which controls all the reds. And if you just dim it down, if you just take it to the left, it also changes her skin tone. Okay, it also affects her skin. But what if you just wanted to affect the lips? Not possible, right? Also, if you are retouching a landscape, converting that into black and white, what if you want to darken just the dark blue areas of the sky and keep the light blue areas of the sky neutral? Not possible, right? So today we're going to be learning an awesome technique to manually select and modify a narrow spectrum of color. Maybe light red, dark red, light green, dark green, magenta pink-ish, red brown-ish, whatever color that exists in the color spectrum, anything can be selected. So without any further ado, let's get started. <laughs> So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to download this photo, check the links in the description. So first of all, all you have to do, create a hue saturation adjustment layer. Click on this grey white icon and choose hue saturation. And this hue saturation is just used for taking away the colors from the image. So all you have to do, take the saturation all the way to the left and close it and name this grey scale, G-R-A-Y-S-C-A-L-E. Okay, you can name it whatever you want, but just for conven convenience purposes, I have just named it grayscale. Now select the background layer again. Suppose you want to darken the lips. Okay, now this is a step by step process. Might take you a lot of time, but then again gives you awesome result and much more control than the conventional way. So select the background layer, create another hue saturation adjustment layer. And this hue saturation adjustment layer will control the luminosity. Let's just tuck it in here. Okay. Now, you can name it lips. Name it lips. Okay. You can turn this grayscale off for a second to see which area we are selecting. Turn this grayscale off. Now, click on this hand icon. Now, this hand icon, just click on that and click on the lips. Okay. It will automatically select a range for you. Now, this range is not precise enough. All you have to do, take the hue all the way to the left to see which areas are being affected. As you can see, apart from the lips, all other areas are being affected. We don't want that. We just want the lips to be affected. So what do we do? So see, you have two bars here, the top bar and the bottom bar. The top bar is the target. Okay. And the bottom bar is the result. So this is the target color spectrum. And this is the area that we are targeting. And this is the result. So as you move the hue, see, this is changing the bottom bar, right? So we need to select and target the specific color of the lips, the target. So first of all, take the outside sliders and bring it to the center. Make it narrower, very narrow. And holding from the center, not from the sliders, holding from the centers, just move it. And just when the lips are completely selected or the midpoint of the lips are selected, just stop right there and 
take this slider, the innermost right slider to the right a little bit. See, the complete lift is selected, a little bit more is selected, but we can mask that out and do the same with the left one. Complete lift, uh, lips are selected now. You can add a little bit of smoothness by taking out the outside sliders. Okay, but this is too much, so we would get this little in like that and inside slider a little in like just like that okay now once you're satisfied bring the hue to zero and turn on the grayscale now you can control the lightness of it make the lips darker there you go it makes it darker but also it affects a little bit of this area and if it bugs you you can just go ahead click on the mask of the lips press controller command i remember Anywhere there is black, the layer would not appear. Anywhere there is white, the layer would appear. And that's the theory behind masks. So now the mask is completely black. So the layer doesn't have any effect over the complete canvas. So now you'll select the brush, make sure the foreground color is white. Press X to toggle between the blacks and the whites, the foreground and the background color. Okay. If the foreground and the background color has some something else other than black and white, you can always press D to reset the swatches. Okay, D for donkey, donkey. I don't know how to pronounce that, but you get the idea. So press X, make sure it's white, and then just paint over the lips. There you go. Done, easy as a pie. So now you can go ahead, create another one for her dress. So another hue saturation. This time, you can also turn this grayscale off, but once you get a hang of it, once you get a practice, you don't have to. You directly go ahead, click on this one, click on the dress, automatically selects the area. Then this time, take the lightness all the way to the left, make it really dark and narrow it down. Figure out a place when the, exactly the dress is selected. Okay, so this is fine, I guess. This exactly selects the dress, but you need to be precise, really precise. Okay. Now, you can control the lightness as per your choice. I think I'll go with this one. Have a look and you can name that dress or top, whatever you want, dress, before, after. You can similarly do the things with the skin tones or whatever you want, maybe her hair, maybe with the sky, whatever you want. You can also do something like brightening up the eyes. So let me just go ahead and show that to you. If I zoom in and come to the eyes and create one, use saturation adjustment layer for the eyes. So this time, what are we gonna do? Click on this one, click on the eyes. You can just turn this off, grayscale off, Depending upon you, if you've got a practice of it, you can keep it on, but I'm just going to show you what actually is happening. So take the hue all the way to the left to see which areas are being affected and then narrow this down. Move it. Now this is fine, but this is also selecting her skin, but we'll get rid of that. How? By masking, right? So we'll take it to the right a little bit. Fine. Take it, take this to the left a little bit. Fine. Now bring the hue all the way back to zero. Turn on the grayscale and brighten the eyes up. Now mask it out, Control command I. Take the brush, make sure the foreground color is white and just paint in the eyes. Make sure the opacity and the flow is 100. And there you go, just the eyes. Very natural way to just brighten up the eyes, lighten up the subject. So have a look before, after. Now let's do the same for her skin and let's move on to other examples. So let me just bring it here so that you can see my face, what I'm doing. Okay, let's make it a little narrower. There we go. Now, create another hue saturation adjustment layer and click on the skin. Take the lightness all the way to the right or to the left, whatever you want. Okay, let's take it to the right and make it narrower. You know what to do, you know the drill, right? Now this time you might have to make it a little bigger, this panel, so that to see which areas are being selected, which areas are not. Okay, now increase it from the right, increase it from the left and it's pretty much selected. Now you can go ahead and make it a little lighter or darker depending upon what you want. So I'll make it a little lighter and then you can do the same for her hair. Let's just close it. You can do the same for her hair, for the sky. And let me show you quick before and after. So anything which is beneath grayscale, I'm going to make a group of it. So I'll select this one. I have not named it by the way. I'll name it skin, name this one eye, and make a group of all this. Skin, hold the shift, select the last hue saturation adjustment layer, press controller command G. Now, 
have a look. This is normal black and white and this is modified black and white makes a ton of difference. Now above this, you can add so many effects, which I'll explain in the next example. In this example, as you can see, we have already created the black and white version. Have a look. So this is the grayscale hue saturation adjustment layer. And just below it, this is the luminosity group. This is the same group. I've just named it luminosity for your understanding. And we have modified each color. So this is the dress. This is the skin and this is the train. Okay. So you get the idea. So let me show you the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Now, one of the problems that you might face while using this method is a little bit of pixel breaking. Now, what do I mean by that? Have a look. If I turn off the skin, this is fine. Skin is darker, uh, not looking nice. But if I turn on the skin, it's looking nice. But have a look here, have a closer look. Pixels are breaking right here. It's not looking nice before, after, see? what's happening. So we need to erase the effect from this area. How to do that? As we did in the previous example, masking, right? So skin, just select this and take the brush, make sure the foreground color is black and just erase it from this. Just like that. And if you're watching a little glow here, you can also do it from here. So as I said, this is a time taking process, but it gives you truly extensive control over the colors. So once you have done this, let's add some effects. Let's have some fun. Effects are the name of the game. So let's just collapse this group and above it, whatever effects you add is on top of grayscale adjustment layer. So let's add a levels adjustment layer. Let's create some vignettes. Now to create some vignettes, click on this gray white icon and choose levels. Now, once you choose levels, now levels has five sliders. All you have to do, take this slider to the left. Let me just give a quick explanation. This slider makes the dark areas darker. This one makes the bright areas brighter. This one makes the dark areas brighter. And this one makes the bright areas darker. The midtone slider makes the midtones darker or brighter. If you move it to the left, it makes the midtones brighter. If you move it to the right, it makes the midtones darker. Let's move back to one. One is the default color, default number. Now let's take this to the left and make it darker. But we didn't want the whole of the image to be darker. We just wanted the corners to be darker. How do we take care of that? Masks. So select the mask, take the brush, make sure the foreground color is black, opacity and flow at 100, make the brush a little bigger and make it harder. Now, how to make it harder, bigger, easily hold the alt or option key and then the right mouse button, hold that, drag it to the right to make it bigger, drag it to the left to make it smaller, drag it up to make it soft, drag it down to make it hard, make it really, really hard and just click once on her face. Okay. Whatever you want to focus on, just click on that with black done. Now our vignette is a little harsh and a little small. We need to make it bigger and softer. How do we do that? Control or command T, T for tennis ball. Make it a little bigger, just like that. And by the way, I'm holding shift and alt to make it bigger from the center. Make it bigger, move it to the top, stretch it a little bit and just like that. Now hit enter. And how to make it soft? Make sure in the you are in the mask properties, if the mask properties is not open, if you cannot see it, make sure the mask is selected and then go to windows and make sure properties is checked. Then you can increase the feather to how, to the number you like. And I guess for me, this is a nice number to be at. Now you can still move it just whoops. Some false things happened. Select the levels. Select the mask, press controller command T and you can still move this, make it bigger, do whatever you want with this and you can see the effect real time. So hit enter and there you go. Have a look at the before, after, I think I'll make it a little smaller like that and hit enter. Now it looks fine. Now you can also add some little film grain over it. How to do that? There are two options to add film grain. I'll show you both. So first off, create a new layer and fill it up with gray. How to fill it up with gray shift backspace. Okay. Shift backspace, shift delete. If you're using a Mac and then it opens up the fill dialog box. If you still cannot open it, you can go to edit and then fill in the fill dialog box, choose 50% gray and click. Okay. Also another way would be 
I'll show you another way to bring up the gray thing. You can press Ctrl Shift N, Command Shift N if you're using a Mac. And it opens up a new layer dialog box and you can name it grain. And you can choose the blend mode to be overlay and then the color to be none and then fill with overlay neutral color. Check this and click OK. It opens up with overlay blend mode and 50% gray. And you cannot see anything because overlay is a blend mode which deletes everything which is 50% gray. Now once you have created the gray layer and changed the blend mode to overlay, all you have to do, go to filter, convert for smart filters. This converts this into a smart object so that whatever values, whatever filters that you give to it, you can always go back and change the values. Okay, so go to filter, noise, add noise. Let's add some noise, whatever value you want. And you can see it in real time how the noise will look. So if you want a little noise just like that, and make sure you have Gaussian checked and monochromatic checked, click OK. So this adds a little bit of film noir to it. Also, there's one more way of doing this. You can always go ahead, double click on add noise and change the values according to your taste and click OK. So this is the non-destructive way of doing this. So let's delete this. Another way of doing this is create a new layer and press Ctrl Alt Shift E. This creates a merged layer. If you're using a Mac, that would be Command Option Shift E. Again, Control Alt Shift E. So this is a merged layer. You can just go to filter. You can also convert this to smart object. And then you can go to filter, filter gallery and add an effect called film grain. Just beneath the artistic tab, you have this film grain and this gives you much more control, but it's a little, you know, it creates a merged layer. So I'm hesitant to use it, but it gives you a really nice effect. So you can increase the grain just like that just like we did in the previous one and you can increase the highlight area and you can increase the intensity so it gives you much more effect just like a film i really love this you know click ok once you're satisfied you can always go back to filter gallery and change the values okay so that's pretty much it that's how you select any color range no matter how narrow or wide that is using the hue saturation adjustment layer so the basic principle or the formula remains the same and it is this you have your image in the bottom most layer. Above that, you have separate hue saturation adjustment layers. The job of which is to manipulate each color. You have to go to the properties of each one of them, select the color that you want, control the luminosity. And on the top, what do you have? You have another hue saturation adjustment layer. The job of which is just to take away the saturation by taking the saturation all the way to the left. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss anything. I'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice people for making Picks and Perfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for your support guys and if you want to support this channel, check the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching.